Thanks for watching Lessons in Minutes with Jay Lee. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe. Today I'll be looking at a past paper question from the Accounting Unit 1 syllabus, and that is 2022 number 1D. And the focus is on a troubled area, which is journal entries. And the question reads, the following list of balances relates to Angola Coffee Corporation as at July 1st, 2019. Ordinary share capital with a power value of $200 and the value is $3,200,000. Five percent cumulative preference shares. Power value is $230 per share and that's a value of $115,000. Share premium is $600,000. Retain earnings $8 million and there is a balance of 8% debenture, and that is $900,000. No preference or ordinary dividends were paid during the financial year ended 30th of June 2019. During the year ended 30th of June 2020, the company performed well financially and engaged in the following transactions. You are to prepare the journal entries for the transactions noted above. So we're going to proceed to look at the first transaction. And that is January 30th, purchase 600 shares of Charlie's Pancake Company at $175 per share, plus paid up brokerage commission of 1.5% of transaction. No. This is basically indicating that the company made an investment in Charlie's Pancake Company and the number of shares purchased are 600 and it is $175 per share. We have to take into account the additional cost that was incurred in order to acquire that investment in Charlie's Pancake Company and that is the brokerage commission of 1.5% percent of the transaction. So we are going to proceed to look at the workings for that as well as the journal entry. And uh, here we go. The We have to pick up the number of shares that were purchased and that is 600 and the value of one share is 175. So in this case, the value of the investment is 105,000. But remember, we have to account for the brokerage fee which was 1.5% of the value of a transaction, and that is 1.5% of the $105,000, and that give us $1,575. In this case, the total acquisition cost is $105,000, which is the value of the investment, plus the brokerage fee, and that give us a total of $106,000. $575. So with that said, we're going to make our entries in the journal. And our date is very important. So we're going to start with that. So it's January 30th. And the account to be debited is the investment. And that is investment in Charlie's Pancake Company. And remember, the value of the investment is $106,575. That is what we're going to record. And the account to be credited is cash and uh, or cash is reducing because, of course, the money was taken from that to pay for the investment in Charlie's Pancake Company. And the value that came from the cash to purchase that investment is $106,575. Now, just in case you are asked to record your narrative, you have to do that. In this question, no indication was given. So to proceed carefully, we're going to record the narration. If it is that the question indicated that the narrative is not required, then of course you would leave that out. But in this case, no information was given. So the right thing for you to do is ensure that you put in your narrative and the narrative for January 30th transaction is purchase of investment. And that is fine. So we're going to move into the next transaction. And uh, that is April 4th. And this transaction reads, issued bonus of one for every five shares, for every five common shares. So 
Again, the transaction reads April 4th, issued bonus of one for every five common shares. Now, in terms of bonus issue, that is given to the shareholders in place of cash dividend. And what this does is to increase their share capital. Okay. And basically what you're what the business is trying to do is to make it more attractive to the shareholders. So it's basically a gift given of shares to current shareholders. And that is in place of the cash dividend. And bear in mind that there is no dividend that is paid on bonus issue. So here we go. We're going to move into the workings for this. But before we get over to the workings, now based on the question, we have ordinary share capital with a power value of $200 each. And the value of the ordinary share capital is $3,200,000. This information is important to us in our calculation as well as the bonus rate. And it is one for every five common share held. Common share and ordinary shares are the same. So let's proceed to do our workings. And in order to do your workings for a bonus issue, if it is that you're given just the number of shares along with the power value, your formula will be number of shares times the bonus rate times the power value. In this case, we're given the value of the ordinary share capital. So it therefore means that we're going to use the other formula, which is share capital multiplied by the bonus rate. Now, in terms of our workings, it is the 3,200,000 multiplied by one fifth. Why one fifth? Because it is one for every five shares. So basically you're dividing by five and that gives us a value of $640,000. Now in terms of our journal entry on uh, April 4th, we need to show that our retained earnings, the business retained earnings reduced by the 640,000. So in this case, retained earnings is debited with $640,000. In terms of the recording of the bonus, it's, this is going to increase the share capital. And that is ordinary share capital is credited with 640000 And the narrative is to record a bonus issue. And that is fine for the narrative. Okay. So now that we have completed April 4th entry in the journal, we're going to proceed to look at the next transaction, and that is May 13th. Now, purchase 5,000 shares of Sharp Telecommunication Inc. for a total consideration of $176,750, inclusive of a brokerage commission of 1% of the transaction. This information is basically telling us that the $176,750 already include the 1% brokerage commission. So the total cost for that investment in Sharp Telecommunication Inc. is $176,750. So we're going to proceed now to enter that in the journal, given the fact that there's no need for us to do any workings. So let's move into that. The date is May 13. Account to be debited is the investment in Sharp Telecommunication Inc. And the value for that is 176,750. And the account to be credited is cash to show that there's a reduction in the cash that we use to make that investment. And that is 176, 750. And to close off the entry for this transaction is the entry of our narration, which is to record the purchase of investment. So now that we have completed May 13th, we're going to move into the next transaction. And that is June 30th. Now, June 30th, reads paid debenture interest and redeem the debenture at par. So basically we're seeing where the basis is now paying the interest that should be paid on the debenture and 
they are repaying the debenture. Remember, debenture is a long-term loan acquired by the company. So now the business is making that payment. So here we go. The information that we need from this is that the debenture has an interest of 8% of the value. So debenture interest to be paid annually is 8% of the value. So we're going to proceed to do that workings and make the entry in the journal. So remember that the debenture is 900,000 and it has an interest rate of 8%. So let's move into making our journal entry. And that is June 30th, account to be debited is the debenture interest. Now in terms of the calculation, it is 8% of the value of the debenture and that gives us a value of $72,000. We now need to show the account to be credited. And this debenture interest is paid from cash. So we're showing a reduction in the cash by, by crediting. And that value is $72,000. And the narration reads, payment of debenture interest. Now we need to remember that June 30th, we were also told that the business, the business, redeemed the debenture at par. So again, the business redeemed the debenture at par. So in this case, we have to show that the business had repaid the debenture. So to do that recording, we're gonna go over to the journal and show the post in the journal. And that is June 30th. Account to be debited is the debenture because we're showing a reduction in that long-term liability. And the value of the debenture is $900,000. We are now going to show our credit entry and that is cash showing a reduction in that asset. And in this case, it is credited with $900,000. So the account to be credited is cash to show that payment, that reduction in the asset. So we're going to... Enter the narration and the narration simply reads debenture redeemed or you could write the redemption of debenture or repayment of debenture. Okay, so we're going to move into our final transaction and that is April 30th and it reads paid total preference dividend, paid total preference dividend. And we are going to take a look at the details relating to preference dividend. Based on records in Angola Coffee Corporation, there are 5% cumulative preference shares valued at $115,000. Cumulative right here is very important to us in terms of when we're doing our recording. What this means is that if it is that the shareholders, the preference shareholders are not paid the dividend for a particular year, they will be owed that amount. Why? Because the cumulative means add up. So whatever is outstanding in terms of dividend, they are to get it the next year along with what is due for that year as well. So in terms of the details from this question, we were told that no preference or ordinary dividends were paid during the financial year ended June 30th, 2019, meaning that the preference shareholders are owed their dividend from last year. So when we're making our payments of dividend for this year, we have to ensure that we account for what is owing along with what they should get for this period. So we're going to use that information now to do our workings and our recording in the journal. So let's proceed to record the preference dividend. The date is June 30th. Account to be debited is preference dividend, but how much is to be paid for the preference dividend? Remember the rate for preference dividend is 5%, we multiplied that by the value of 
$115,000. That's the value of the preference shares. And we're going to multiply that by two. Why are we multiplying by two? The rate per year for preference dividend is 5% of the value. And because no dividend was paid last year, we are going to pay what was owing along with this year. So the preference shareholders are going to get two years worth of dividend in one. And having calculated that, we have $11,500 that we're paying out for preference dividend. And the account to be credited is cash. And that is 11,500, indicating that our cash account reduced by 11,500 because of that payment of dividend. And our narration is payment of preference dividend. There is also another detail that we have to take into account for June 30th, which is that transaction, which indicated that the Business declared and paid interim common share dividends at $10 per share. Now we're going to take a look at the balance as it relates to the ordinary share capital. Now for the ordinary share capital, we're seeing that its par value is $200 per share and there is a value of total ordinary share capital of $3,200,000. Now, remember the transaction indicated that the ordinary shareholders, the common stock holders, receive $10 dividend per share held. Now, in this case, we're seeing the value of the share and we're seeing the par value per share. We're not seeing the number of shares, but we are paying out $10. The company is paying out $10 per share. So we have to determine the number of shares. So with that said, we're going to proceed to look at the workings and to make the entry in the journal. The account to be debited is ordinary dividend. And the workings for the dividend is the $3,200,000 divided by the $200,000 which is a par value per share because our aim is to determine the number of shares because the business is paying out $10 per share. So it's a 3,200,000 divided by the par value and that gives us 16,000 shares. That 16,000 is then multiplied by $10 per share to get the dividend value and that is one hundred and. $60,000. So the ordinary share dividend that is paid out is $160,000. And the account to be credited is cash to show that there is a reduction in that asset that was used to make the payment of the dividend. And that is $160,000. And our narration is payment of ordinary dividend. And that basically takes us to the end of this lesson where we have worked out the 2022 number 1D journal entries from the accounting unit one pass paper. Like, share, and don't forget to subscribe.